I just want to thank all of you for coming out. I want to thank you all for the support um, from the beginning of the, of the race all the way to the end. Um, as I look out and I see this crowd, I see people from all over the state of Alabama. Um, and one surprise that I got this week, and I know he didn't come all the way here to see me, but my uncle is here all the way from Arizona, the state of Alabama. <laughs> my daddy's youngest brother, Emerson. So most of you all know the rest of them. And you know Emerson as well, but he's just not around as much. But I, I just mentioned that, not to necessarily single him out, but just to talk about the fact that this election was a collaboration of, and a meeting of minds of people from all over the world. Um, there were so many people that supported me and encouraged me. And they've been doing it ever since I was, I was about to say since I was little, but I'm still little. <laughs> one, of the, one of the funniest things that I've had to encounter, and it happened, it happened in Dallas County more than anywhere else. Um, Dallas County was the only place I had a, a billboard because my funds, I, I didn't raise the most money <laughs> of candidates that ran for office, but I said, I'm gonna get you a billboard and put it in Dallas County. So over the course of the past months, I've been meeting people who recognize me from the billboard. And every time I run into somebody, they say, hey, you look familiar, but, and I said, but what? You thought I was taller than this. <laughs> And when I say that, it just it seems like people just calm down because that's exactly I didn't know you was that little. But but I do want to assure you, um, size has never been an obstacle for me. Um, I believe that if you dream something, then you can accomplish something. The basketball court, I had so many of my shots blocked and rejected. <laughs> Just because I thought I was as big as everybody else. <laughs> and I believe in life that when we, as we've represented people and we've represented clients, that every client is big. Every issue that they have is big. All right, all right. Sometimes people are like, why y'all hold on to the case so long? We're trying to get everything we can get out of it. When we were defending people, sometimes, why are you taking so long? What's going on? It's like, I just believe we can get a better deal. I believe if we can convince them more about who you are, then we might be able to achieve a better outcome. Because people are important to me. And I'm not going to go into any details about what's happening politically, nationwide, statewide and even locally. But there was a thought that occurred to me this Thursday morning in the midst of a lot of stuff that's swirling around. And that thought was this, and I'm gonna share it with you now. We have to put people over personalities. We have to put people above politics. So often, our political scene has become about the personalities and the people that are wearing the suits and are holding the positions. What we really need to continuously focus on is that people have problems. And they're not happy about them. They don't choose them. But people have problems. So they seek professionals to try to find solutions to those problems. And the professionals that they seek cannot continue to be so driven by their own personality and their own problems, their own politics, that they forget about the people. What I want us to do as a community of people from counties far and near, all races, all ages, all social economic groups, is that let's make an effort, at least in these five counties, we can start here, we gotta start where we are. Let's start trying to make sure 
that we do whatever we can to help one another solve problems. Yeah. Less of the personality. Don't worry about who's getting the credit. Stop trying to point blame. Because at the end of the day, I want to enjoy time with my folk. You want to enjoy time with your folk. We need to make a better effort because as that tornado that devastated Dallas County, as it showed, and let's give God some glory because I haven't heard him in the Dallas. I firmly believe that there are no announced fatalities at this stage and hopefully there won't be any. But I firmly believe that that was an exhibition of the power of God. Yeah. Letting us know that at any given time, at any given moment, yeah. these ivory towers that we worship, the cars that we worship, the houses that we live in can be raised to the ground. And all we'll be left with is our spirit yeah. and what we're really about. So as I assume this position, what I, what I want you to do is to understand that I ran to serve. I ran to see if we could solve some of the problems together. I don't have all of the answers. You don't have all of the answers. But if we can agree to put people over politics, then I just believe that things are going to turn around. Things are gonna turn around. Things are gonna turn around. Thank y'all for coming out. I'm, I'm, I'm so humbled. I talked to a couple of friends of mine. Uh, I'm, I didn't attend the University of Alabama, but I'm an Alabama basketball fan. <laughs> and they tipped off today at three o'clock. <laughs> and I said this for three o'clock. <laughs> It is almost four o'clock. So I am done. I got some friends that I gotta let go catch the LSU game. <laughs> and um, and I just I'm just looking forward to celebrating fellowship with y'all. Thank y'all so much um, for all that you did. But what I want you to do is understand that elected me was nothing. The real work for me and you starts now. If you saw it happen, don't be afraid to talk about it. If your child did wrong and you knew they did wrong, we got to stop holding them up if they're wrong. The real work starts now, not just for me, but for all of us. May God bless you and may God keep you is my prayer. Uh, right now what I'm going to do, and I want to thank my brother, Jamal, can y'all see him? Step up on my turn. Let's, um, let's celebrate him. He did a great job today. I was looking at my watch like, boy, you better come on. It's almost 3 o'clock. But he is the most fashionable of us. And sometimes he likes to be fashionably late. <laughs> But he got here at 258 and a half. <laughs> so he did a great job of, of, of running us through the program um, on today. I want to thank my family, my wife, up and she said, baby, don't, I don't want to say that. You didn't tell me I ain't got nothing prepared. So I'm going to let her escape. But without them, um, this wouldn't be possible. Um, my mother, she was saying, Miss Betty King Turner. <laughs> One thing about living in the country, we have to drive the court sometimes. We drive so far. And I feel those minutes talking to my mom. Right. So. I've got some new co-workers. Uh, 
are employees, um, that are employees of the Fourth Judicial Circuit District Attorney's Office. If if you are here, those of you that are here, would you please stand and let everybody see you? You, you want to talk about a unique situation. Anybody ever went to work on the first day and you're supposed to be the boss? And they all know each other and don't know, know you? <laughs> Well, that, that, is the, that is the situation. <laughs> but we, we, we plan to work together. Um, so many people, for those of you who are going to get ready to run for office one of these days, every time I had a radio program or something, folks, folks would get on the radio and you're nervous, you don't know what question is going to come out. So I remember being on the radio, I think it was uh, a radio show one day, and somebody called and they were like, well, if you get a lick, they say you gonna fire everybody that work there. Is that your plan? <laughs> and I remember saying that that's not the plan. But what I want to do is to interview people and talk to them and let them talk to me. You know, because sometimes it's not all about people wanting to work for you. Sometimes it's about whether they want to work with you. So I understand that people have families and people have lives and there was uncertainty involved in this situation because it's the same thing with me. But to those of you who haven't met me yet, I'm going to give you a chance. And you give me a chance. But one thing about it is if the relationship don't work, <laughs> Sometimes people break up. <laughs> if you don't want to put people in front of politics, we gonna break up. If you don't want to put professionalism into each and everything that you do and understand that people matter, then we're gonna break up. But I got good news for you. Sometimes even when you break up, God still have another husband and wife out there for you. <laughs> At this time, I'm going to bring up a friend of mine, Jamal. I, I had him celebrate you a few minutes ago because I'm going to handle it and ride it on out for him. <laughs> Pastor Bethel, a good friend of mine, is going to come before us now. This is it. I'm done with my speech. He's going to come before us now and give us our closing prayer and a blessing of the food. Thank y'all so much. <laughs>